Hi, Holistic Travel Nurse. In this episode, I am going to talk about something that's near and dear to my heart that I feel like is not talked about enough, and that is what I do in the hospital today, which is um, take care of your kidneys. And so we're going to talk about kidney health and maintaining good health and understanding chronic and acute and breaking it down to a very general place so it's not going to be over your head if like you were talking to the nephrologist or a doctor who will just go way over your head with knowledge. So um, stay tuned and I think this is an important topic to empower people to managing their health and understanding that um, you're going to be hearing more on this on my channel because matter of fact right now my husband has been doing a kidney cleanse and this is something actually if he went and saw a nephrologist or a regular doctor, they probably wouldn't know anything about unless you maybe saw a naturopath or a functional medicine practitioner. Maybe they would. Um, but I believe this is a very crucial topic. So we'll, we'll just go over your kidneys, where they're at, what they do for your body, and things that, and maybe some ideas about chronic kidney disease because it's such a huge topic in the U.S. because there is about one in five people will have some chronic kidney disease and you can have some chronic kidney disease and not even know you have it. So we're going to talk about that. We're, I'm going to talk about um, um, acute kidney injury and lots and lots of things that could cause the kidneys to not work so well. And then I will talk about things that you can do naturally to help promote your kidneys to working better. So that's important. So let's talk about where your kidneys are at. Um, people know this if they ever had a kidney. Well, actually, if you have a kidney stone, sometimes you don't have the pain there. Pain is referred somewhere else. So they sit behind the ribs in your back. You have two of them, and most people know this. And they filter. They're big filtration for your body. So everything water-based, um, they balance. And so your blood, which you have like five liters of blood circulating, depending on the person and the size, an adult, um, are circulated and pretty quick in both kidneys. Actually, they do best when you're laying at night and sleeping. That's why it's, you know, you have to get up in the morning and pee first thing. Because um, they are just doing a fabulous job in filtering your blood. Now, they're also controlling your pH of your blood. That is um, highly important, and, and that is the... Uh, kidneys job in making sure that pH balance is normal or maintaining it's normal. They're also, your kidneys also um, secrete hormones. Um, they will absolutely, definitely, they make the urine, but they send the urine down obviously to the bladder. Um, they monitor about your red blood cells and how well, because your red blood cells are recycled, so your body's constantly your body is constantly recycling and making new cells. Um, and that is part of like what we call a big important word, homeostasis or balance and maintaining that balance. And if you're out of that in one area, your body will try to adapt. Um, so you're made up of a ton of water in your body. And so managing that water balance in your body is important, is an important thing to do. Um, if you aren't making urine, you're not gonna be um, living very long. Um, and so I always think of like your vascular system, meaning your veins and your arteries as highways and freeways in your body. And we don't want them congested. We want them flowing well and we want them flowing um, properly through the filtration and things will be dumping off um, in those kidneys. So those kidneys do so much for you. And so like chronic kidney disease means a slow progressive damaging of the kidneys and that happens over time um, it can be faster and greater and it's actually something that's been growing it is a huge correlation to type 2 diabetes which you see is another thing that is growing a lot in the US and outside the US if they stick to our standard American diet right you're only gonna see that grow and that wears and tears on your kidneys so they very much correlate together so um, your kidneys will go, wait a second, your blood is just so sweet and there's so much sugar in it, we're gonna make you pee more. And then putting putting any amount of extra work in your kidneys is not a good thing. Uh, so the same thing is that it's summertime as I'm recording this. I know I um, 
if you're listening, I have a jean jacket on because I have the AC on. If you're watching it on my YouTube channel, it, um, I have a jean jacket on. The AC is running. You might hear it. But when you're out, you, we see this all the time where people um, don't get enough water and they get dehydrated and dehydration will cause a lot of problems with your kidneys and really make your kidneys upset. Your kidneys also have um, secrete a hormone called renin and they monitor and try to control that blood pressure because they need a good amount of pressure into the kidney. Now, of course, that high blood pressure at a continuous too much pressure, like pounding on something over and over and over again is gonna cause, like if you were just to pound on something over and over and over again, you're gonna see some damage. Same thing if that too much pressure within your kidneys, you're gonna cause that little blue area in your kidney to have some issues. Um, so maintaining a healthy um, blood pressure is important. And monitoring that, um, that's why they will say hypertension, you know, will cause the kidney issues. So that, we so have that in play. Um, and then, then we talk about all the toxins. So if there are water soluble toxins in your body, they get actually stored in certain areas, but then your body will have to get rid of those, and so that will put pressure on the kidneys. So a lot of medications, um, a lot of actually antibiotics, if I just can go off the note here, there are tons of antibiotics, but only 10% of them are not hard on your kidneys. So just take that in place if you've been on an antibiotic, that that is actually hard on your kidneys, so maybe you need to increase your water, and stay tuned, we'll talk about some of the um, other things that that are very good in supporting your kidney health. Um, things that are hard on your kidneys is the poor diet, high in carbohydrates, so all those sugars, like I just said, and against everything that the American Heart Association and the American Diabetes Association, but carbohydrates, so processed bread, your biscuits, those things are actually harder on your kidneys. Um, we have this huge fluctuation of insulin and um, which is another hormone, and then sugars, and those are all do affect the kidneys also. So you have multifaceted thing, and your body's always maintaining this balance. Um, people will think that they want to alkaline their body and drink those alkaline waters. Not so great because your stomach acid, or you first place where you're taking the water, has to have a higher pH. All these different areas of your body have to have different pHs, and so. One way and maintaining and seeing your urine and your overall health, one way of checking that is um, getting a pH strip and checking your urine. And that fluctuates the day, but if it is really low in the scale of being a five, you know, or below six, um, then you are definitely in an acidosis and you're not doing so hot. And you should definitely, you know, be seen by a practitioner. Um, and then it fluctuates through the day. So being um, 6.9 or um, up to 7.4, all that, that's what your urine should be. Um, and so your urine, because you'll know that your kidney help a lot actually by just looking at your urine. If your urine is dark, ooh, you're, you're not in a good place with your kidneys right now. You have made them mad. And so you need to hydrate more. Um, if you're hydrating more and you're still not making urine, you need to go to the hospital. <laughs> Um, if, because there are some, there are some medication, there are some things that, um, matter of fact, that will cause kidney damage and acute, meaning right there, you're going to put your kidneys over the place. I have dialyzed patients and put them on a dialysis machine that will help support and clean out your blood that your kidneys aren't doing. A lot of times I did that, um, last flu season with a patient that was, uh, from taking medications over the counter. Ibuprofen is extremely hard on your kidneys. Tylenol is actually some too. It works as a breakdown first in the liver and then be discreted out through the, the kidneys, but it's, it's harder on the liver. But ibuprofen and proxen are very tough on your kidneys and there's a lot of other replications of taking those drugs on a continuous basis, even off and on. So it should be a very rare occasion, like maybe once a year or something that you really would happen to need that. You really should go for a natural approach and get off the ibuprofen all the time, get off the naproxen all the time. Those are very damaging to your kidneys. Um, alcohol, of course, is also hard on your liver and your kidneys. Um, and there are some other 
funky drinks out there, I'm sure any of those monsters or whatever those drinks, those are actually not so great on your kidneys also. We drink way too much soda and sweet drinks, and we should be drinking more H2O. And maybe I should do an episode just on water, but the quality of water that you have is super important. And you think if you're buying a bottle of water, it's better, but not really if some of the plastic has been heated up and back and forth and whatever the chemicals in that plastic um, have leaked into that water and you're not getting a very good source of water. You want a living water, a mineral water. Um, you can find those sometimes in even glass bottles. Anything in glass is better. Um, you can get a filtration system at your house and get better quality water that way. So just a little tidbit on water because it's so important. It's so important to be drinking a really good source of water. I know, I know, you don't like water. So we use, um, I use deuterium essential oils in my water to make my water taste better, also to aid with my kidneys. Um, I use my lemon, my grapefruit, some of my citrus oils. Do not use another essential oil company and put them in your water. You will not have a good effect of what will happen with those additives that will make you sick. Let's talk about herbal teas though. Herbal teas are actually pretty good on the kidneys. Actually one that's really great is hibiscus, dandelion root. Those all are really great. I just happened to get a book just recently. I'm super excited about um, sharing more with this, but this is a guide for medicine and herbs. And there's a lot of herbs that are really powerful and helpful for the aiding the kidneys. And I will do an episode on that when we talk about the kidney cleanse. But there are many things that are going to benefit to the kidneys. But see, you could be having some kidney issues like that, chronic kidney issues, and having like no symptoms. And there are stages, or stages one through five of, of chronic kidney disease. And so when you're looking at that, you have absolutely no symptoms and maybe they're not even testing the right lab work in your blood and you're not getting your physicals, you could be slowly having this in the background. If you're a diabetic of any source, type one, type two, you have a much higher risk of having any chronic kidney disease issues. Um, and so you'll see soon on my channel here, well, I will have, gotta have a sip of water while I'm talking here. Um, a um, naturopath who is a type 1, which um, we, we spoke last night and we have been friends since, I don't know, middle school. Um, and um, she has no kidney issues and she maintains her health and she saves her health um, all naturally and manages um, her A1C. That's a marker of the that is a, a, a blood marker we should, that they use to monitor how much your red blood cells are sticking um, with that glucose on them over a few month period and she keeps it very, very low and stays to a very healthy diet. And so she will give us some great recommendations when it comes to diabetes health. So you're gonna wanna stay tuned um, for that episode that will be coming up um, in a couple weeks here. I'll be posting it. Um, but so anyways, they all tie in together because this is such a big topic because I see it all the time. We have overdoses. Oh, aspirin. Aspirin's another one hard on your kidneys. There's so many medications. So many of them that are really tough on your kidneys. And so even when I um, did a PEDS assignment, we see issues with the pediatric patients. Not to mention heavy metals, guys. So many heavy metals. That's why I would say a water filtration system of some sort. And, and um, Maybe I'll get into a huge discussion about the best water filtration systems because those are actually harder on your kidneys. Um, I had two uncles with kidney failure and both they did not figure out the reason or the why. They both ended up on dialysis. And I believe both of them were for a possible heavy metal toxicity. Um, those, it could be some kind of those, those toxins that we are being exposed to. So clean up your lifestyle and knowing um, if you're in a area, especially northeastern area, there's still lead piping and lead is very, very hard. Um, that's why you want to be some kind of filtration system at home if you're and to drink really good water or you know if you're going to a place where they have a reverse osmosis machine and you can just go buy a big plastic bottle that you're gonna take home and it's not gonna be heated up and you're gonna put it on the thing and get good water, absolutely do that. Um, you're not a big water drinker, you gotta do some stuff to make yourself a water drinker. Um, those little additives with all those artificial 
things in them, not great. Don't add those to the water. Those are just going to be harmful. You know, switch to, um, if you're a big, huge tea drinker, really actually, I'm in the South, everybody drinks sweet tea, go to unsweet, start there. And then um, there are so many different amazing herbal teas, but you want to get some organic herbal teas that will be best for your kidneys. And so um, you can grow hibiscus flowers and make your own hibiscus tea. You know, in the Chinese medicine, they use a lot of, um, you know, green teas, which is an incredible, great antioxidant support for you. Um, and especially the matcha green tea. Um, there are so many different other ones of those that maybe I'll put that in the show notes. If you're very interested, you can actually reach out to me and contact me. And that is something that will definitely work with you. Besides that there are some herbs and essential oils that are both beneficial and helpful to the kidneys. Um, but if you're thirsty, you're already kind of behind the time when it comes to being a little dehydrated. If your lips are getting chapped, those are signs of some dehydration. Um, and as you get older, you know what? Our body messes with us. And so you will sometimes feel hungry when you're actually thirsty, which is just not cool, body, not cool, but it, it does. So you'll want to make sure you're hydrating well um, and getting in good source water and make sure how much water are you supposed to be drinking? If you are making urine and you're not on the dialysis and you're not on a fluid restriction for a heart reason or any other reason, then you're supposed to drink half of your body weight in ounces. And so that's a lot of fluid. And if you break it down to only ounces, if you're doing eight to 10 cups of glasses, eight ounce glasses of water, you're doing okay. Um, so when you get up in the morning, then one of the best things you can do is some water and some lemon. You can, if you don't have the doTERRA's or lemon essential oil, you can go ahead and just get um, some organic lemons and squeeze it in and do that in the morning. That is a great way just to flush and get things moving. And start with that before your cup of coffee. Um, or, you know, if it's wintertime, an herbal tea. I love my herbal teas. I love my chamomile teas. I love my Ogalan root. I love all these different amazing, um, I'm a big fan of mulberry tea. I am like this huge tea connoisseur of herbal teas. It's, I love it. But before that, I need to make sure I'm drinking water. I have a stainless steel with a stainless steel straw where I can put, um, I usually like well, my lemon or my grapefruit essential oil and um, drink my water through the day and making sure that I'm getting and staying hydrated because that's one way you're going to do best for kidneys. Um, again, there are a lot of medicines that you need to be monitoring your kidney source when it comes to medications. And if you're a diabetic, you're going to want to stay tuned because we'll, we'll and tie in with keeping that healthier blood sugar and not having to give yourself uh, not just the blood sugar, but also the insulin level and the insulin resistance. Those all pay a big factor to your overall health and all your vascular system, which your vascular system will affect your kidneys anything with the blood um, and so if, if there is also another effect your kidneys do is your vitamin D if your kidneys aren't functioning well they're not gonna they will help synthesize and the vitamin D that you're taking in or from the Sun it, it will change it over and make it the vitamin D that will be useful in the body half the time um, most people are walking around with the low vitamin D levels and they um, that causes a lot of health issues. Just increasing your vitamin D level decreases the risk of kidney and heart disease, many other things. Um, and if you're living in a state where you're not getting enough sunshine, then you definitely need to be supplementing with a vitamin D supplement. Also the same thing when it goes to magnesium. Magnesium is another um, electrolyte that your body will balance, but half the time you're on a lower level of it. And so um, there, I will do a discussion sometime just on electrolytes and maybe how we um, um, are on whole food supplements and we do certain things that will increase it and doing a green juice in the morning is another one that will help give you those electrolytes plus um, eye hydration at the same time. Um, juicing I'm a huge fan of anyways. Um, I'm doing sometimes a juice cleanse is super powerful for your kidneys. If your kidneys are working, that's one of the things that you do when you do a cleanse is getting a juice cleanse. 
And so those things are like cucumbers, which are great for your kidneys. Ooh. My computer just... Sorry about that. My computer just lost the screen, so <laughs> I have to edit that. Um, so cucumbers are very good for your kidneys. Celery is very good for your kidneys. Green apples are good for your kidneys. Parsley, eating the parsley on the plate, and it's not just this pretty thing you put on the side, but it's actually something that's very, very good for your kidneys. So when you're making a juice or a green smoothie, think of adding organic parsley into the mix because it's super powerful and great for your kidneys. Um, watermelon and watermelon seeds are another incredible thing for your kidney health. Um, they're very good for you. Um, if you are diabetic, you better watch how much sugar is in with the watermelon in the watermelon season. Um, any of the melons are actually pretty good. Cantaloupe, all those things are super great for you. What we said again is not good for you is grains. So I don't see a reason for bread. Um, you can you can try to do a low carb bread, but bread not good for you. Um, and there's so many other, any processed things, there's a lot of processed things um, also. And then of course, sodium and just salting everything with that ionized salt is not great. You wanna get, uh, Himal I love the Himalayan pink salt because it tastes better, plus you're getting minerals in it. So you're cooking with that. Um, things that are also good, you know, spinach, leafy greens, all those things are impactful and good for your kidneys good for your kidney health. We don't get enough of that. People are on the go and so much and they aren't doing enough good self-care. So if you're listening to this driving, um, you know what? Take the effort in making your own lunch. And hey, I will wish there, if you're in the area where they have a place where there's a juicery and they will make you a fresh green juice, go try it if you've never had one. If you have great functioning kidneys, go try uh, a green juice. And you're not trying to stay in a ketone and you're not worried, really, really watching your carbs and staying in a ketosis, then go try a green smoothie. When I'm sick and we get a little down and sick, I crave a green drink. We um, were sick last year and lasted us only like three days. We're in and out of it very quick with the symphony of cells protocol. But the big thing we went and did because I wasn't feeling up to us getting my juicer out and doing all the juices, we went to a juice bar and had to make us a green drink. Love them. I mean, I'm just, I was obsessed with them for a while. And if you do a um, cleanse of any sort, you are going to add a green juice to it. It's super, it's super impactful for you. Um, there are apple cider vinaigrette is another thing that we do every single day that's great for the kidneys. So is um, some aloe vera juice, a couple brands out there of aloe vera juice is also super powerful for your kidneys. So you can add those. Um, and so you have to plan ahead to take care of your health. Um, I like to plan ahead so I can make enough of dinner or whatever that I can take it the next day. So I have the healthy thing with me. And then I'm also, I carry my cup everywhere I go. So I know I'm getting hydrated and staying hydrated well enough. I'm especially known for this for kids too, even when it comes to, um, when they're in sports, gosh, that's so important. That is so, it's so important. Um, Athletes will put more stress on their kidneys, a lot of stress on their kidneys if they're not hydrating well. And so professional athletes, you see this all the time. Um, and you see this all the time in, I've seen it in kids definitely um, that are doing sports, especially outside when you're sweating more. So here in the South where you just can step outside in the heat and just sweat, you're losing these fluids and you need to re replenish those fluids. Um, I hope this, I could really ramble on about so many different things. Um, maybe I'll go into a bigger, we will go into a bigger talk and we'll talk about what we've done with my husband and his kidney cleanse and what's been working for him so that it could be powerful for you. And knowing those, some of those numbers, when it looks at those labs, if you don't understand them, we can talk about those. Um, that's when you can definitely reach out to me and we can discuss and I will give you a 30 minute free consultation to just go over your health and give you some ideas of what to do. So um, you can email me at holistictravelnurse at gmail.com. And I do answer all my emails. Sometimes it takes me 24 hours or 48 hours, depending on where I'm at with travel or what I'm doing and still working. But I will get back with you. Um, so I'm thankful that you are listening to this or watching this on my YouTube channel. And that you would go ahead and just share it and subscribe because I know that there are um, a lot you're going to 
get out of this channel, a lot you're going to get out of this podcast, that you could help somebody else. I have some interviews coming up with um, and some physicians that will be educating on some amazing topics and have some incredible books. Um, not to mention, I really want you to know that you can manage your health at home. So you're going to hear a lot of people talk about um, what essential oils have done for them, what natural healing has done for them, what cleaning up the toxins have done for them. So you're going to hear live stories and real stories of real people that have um, had a huge gain shift in their health or mental or physical and financial health. Um, and so you want to listen to those. So um, thank you for listening. Thank you for watching if you're watching and go ahead and subscribe.